Hi everyone, it's Tish with Naptime Creations. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out a lot. So hit that subscribe button. Today we're gonna be making a huge silicone mold. So let's jump in and get started. For the bottom of my mold, I like to use packing tape. So I'm taking about eight pieces and I'm just overlapping that packing tape. Um, I'm overlapping each piece over the previous piece so it forms a nice barrier. You can use transfer tape, contact paper, um, whatever you want, but I like to do it this way with the packing tape. It's just the easiest for me um, and I found that my silicone doesn't leak when I do it this way. So I'm just gonna keep kind of just making my barrier and now we're gonna go in with our mold housing. This is a huge mold housing that my friend Carrie at Blue Create Molds made for me. She custom made it and it came in four pieces. Um, so if you guys are looking for mold housings, definitely check her out. I will link her website and all her information down below. She can make you any shape and size that you want. And she even put Naptime Creations in there. So the silicone molds show Naptime Creations, which I thought was really awesome. So looking back, um, I should have put this together kind of like off to the side, but I just wanted to do it this way so you guys could see how I was putting the pieces together. So I'm putting the four pieces together and I'm clipping them together with binder clips. You can get the binder clips off Amazon. I'll link them down below. But when I put the mold housing together on the tape, it kind of created wrinkles. Um, so don't do it on top of your tape. Kind of do it off to the side. Put your mold housing together. Put the binder clips on and then place it on the tape. It's not a big deal if you do do it on the tape, um, but it just kind of saves you an extra step from having to take the mold housing off and then reposition it. So I would just do it off to the side and then place it down on the tape. So I got my four pieces all put together. I'm just going to add these binder clips on and then I didn't like those wrinkles that were on the tape. So I'm going to actually just pick it up and then reposition it back down on my tape. And I have made quite a few other videos on my channel um, making silicone molds. So if you haven't seen those videos, definitely go check them out. I'll link them down below um, so you can see different ways that I've done silicone molds in the past. So you can see here, I'm just kind of picking up that mold housing. It came right off, especially because this one is really heavy once it's all assembled. And then I'm just going to place it back down on that tape to kind of get rid of those wrinkles that I had on there from building it on top of the tape. I'm just going to push it down so it's got a nice tight seal on top of that tape. And then I'm going to go in with some 100% silicone caulk. This is optional. You could also use hot glue if you wanted to. I just like to do this because I'm kind of a worry wart sometimes and I don't want silicone to flow out from underneath the mold housing. So I'm just gonna take this silicone and go around the perimeter of my mold housing. So that way I didn't have to worry if any silicone was gonna leak out underneath my mold housing. Um, I have had that happen before and it's such a bummer when you go check on your piece the next day and you're like, oh my gosh, this leaked all over. So you have wasted silicone rubber and you have to basically redo your mold or pour some more silicone on top of it because a lot of it leaked out. So I just like to do this extra step just to ensure that it's not gonna leak. I let that silicone caulk dry for 24 hours. The one I use says it's good to go in 30 minutes but I just let it dry for 24 hours and this is the flower that we're going to be molding. I took a microfiber cloth, cleaned it off and I have been handling this piece with gloves. You don't want to get fingerprints or oils, natural oils from your hands on the pieces that you're molding. So I just cleaned it off and I positioned it down on my tape and now we're going to mix up our silicone rubber. For today's project, I'm going to be using the Let's Resin Silicone Rubber. It's a one-to-one -one ratio by weight. You have to measure this out by weight. And I always like to go in with my Part B first. So I'm going in with 15.1 ounces of Part B. Um, I was going for 15, but I accidentally added a little bit more. So we're going to do 15.1 ounces Part B and 15.1 ounces Part A. 
and I'm just going to pour in the part A now, zero out my digital scale. And if you don't have a digital scale, you can get them off Amazon. I'll link one down below if you want to check. It. This product is a one to one ratio by weight. Like I mentioned, I just wanted to kind of emphasize that you cannot measure this product out by volume. It has to be done by weight. So I just am waiting to get that one little 0.1 ounce out of there. I'm going to go in and just mix this up for five minutes. And when you mix silicone rubber, you want to mix it slowly. Just like when you mix resin, you want to scrape the sides of your cup, scrape the bottom of your cup, scrape off your stir stick, and just mix slowly because you don't want to introduce a bunch of air bubbles into your silicone rubber. So I'm going to mix this up and then what I like to do, this is just something that I do personally um, to make sure that my silicone is 100% mixed. I'm going to take this mixture and I'm going to pour it into another cup and then I'm going to mix it for another two minutes. And that's just going to ensure that your silicone rubber is 100% mixed. Um, you don't want to have anything any problems with your mold setting up from improperly mixed silicone rubber so when you take that first cup that you mixed pour it into your second cup make sure you scrape everything out of that first cup make sure you get all the little drops and bits out and then i'm going to mix it up for another two minutes and this you know it's not required but it's just what i like to do i know some people probably think that that's a little bit too much but like I said, sometimes I worry about stuff, so I'd rather just kind of over mix it than under mix it. So I'm just going to mix this up for two more minutes and then we'll be ready to pour. And I didn't know how much silicone I was going to need for this. I was hoping 30 ounces would be enough, but it wasn't quite enough. So um, that's okay. We're going to do another pour tomorrow after this first 30 ounces is poured down. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my silicone rubber and I'm pouring it high up above my stir stick and I'm letting that stream hit my stir stick and that will help eliminate bubbles. See how it's kind of just flowing off my stir stick? And I did that mostly on the flower because I didn't want air bubbles ending up on the surface of the flower. And now I'm just going in with my cup and I'm pouring it high above my mold housing. It's about one foot above and I'm pouring it in a slow kind of small stream. That's gonna help eliminate bubbles when you're working with silicone rubber. And I'm just gonna make sure that I scrape everything out of my cup, making sure I get all that silicone rubber out of there. And then I'm gonna let it dry for 24 hours and we're gonna go in and pour the second layer. And these, this silicone rubber degasses on its own. I was trying to show you there were some bubbles, but they did pop on their own. You don't have to add any heat to this. You don't have to torch it. Don't add any heat to it. The bubbles will degas on their own. So this is the next day, 24 hours later, I'm going in with 20 more ounces of my silicone rubber. And that was enough. So 50 ounces total for this piece, which is a really huge silicone mold. I had never made a mold this big before. I was like, oh my gosh, I hope it turns out nice. And it did, it ended up working out really nice. So I'm just scraping everything out of my cup and that's it. I let it dry for 24 hours and then we're going to be ready to take the mold housing apart and see how it turned out. I did cover it up with a little sheet of wax paper to keep any dusties out of there as the silicone was drying. And here I started to take my mold housing apart from the top and I accidentally broke that little piece off. So don't do that. Always start from the bottom. So just kind of grab your bottom of your mold and just start taking it apart from the bottom like this. I should have flipped it over to start with like this, but lesson learned, you can learn what not to do in this case. I'm just going to pull that tape off. You can see the tape comes off easily and the silicone caulk comes right off of the mold housing. The four pieces of the mold housing are going to pop right off. And of course, you know, I took off the binder clips, just taking the mold housing off. Mold housing is nice and clean, good to go for next time. That silicone caulk peels right off of there. And now we're going to take this flower out. And to demold the flower, I'm just kind of pulling down on the sides, just loosening it up and going around, just making sure that I get each of those petals, kind of breaking the seal 
of the silicone rubber and then it's going to pop right out. Um, this mold ended up being a little bit sticky. Um, I have had that happen before when I use this silicone rubber, but it doesn't matter, like it doesn't affect your resin casts. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there that the mold was a little bit sticky. So now I'm going in with a cuticle trimmer and I'm just going to clean up around the perimeter of the mold, cleaning up um, any little extra silicone around the perimeter and then around the inside cavity of the flower. And this flower has a matte finish, so the mold is gonna have a matte finish. It's a little ceramic flower that I actually picked up off Facebook Marketplace and I thought, oh, I really wanna make a mold of that. So I'm gonna be doing a resin pour in this one next, so make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss that video. And you can see, here's how it turned out. I got it all cleaned up, it turned out awesome. Making silicone molds is so much fun. I really enjoy making them. I encourage you guys to give it a try. If you've never made your own silicone molds before, definitely give it a go. It's really easy to do. I was really intimidated to try my first mold, but after I did my first one, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so fun. I have to make more. So let me know what you guys think. Thanks so much for watching. I'll link all the materials I used down below in the description box, along with any coupon codes that I have. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're not already and I'll see you guys soon for another video. Bye guys!